Hi, my name is Roger. How are you doing? In my last two videos, first we did a walkthrough on my stock plugin template, and then we set it up for mixing. Today, we're gonna mix some drums. <laughs> So as you can see, I have my session set up. I made a loop so we can listen throughout the song. It's the Roger That song of 2021. A song you can record and win a great plugin from Robotic Bean, the hand clap studio. Links, you know, you know where the links are. We're gonna focus mainly on the mix window in this session. And what are we gonna start with? Sometimes I start with the vocal sometimes the bass. If there's an obvious main instrument, like an acoustic guitar or piano, I often start with that. Because I have recorded this song, it's not the best recording I've ever done, far from it. I did it rather fast, but it is decent enough so I can show you how I would mix it. Because I am familiar with the tracks, I know I want to start with the drums. So let's listen to the overheads by themselves. They sound like this. Good recording of overheads, no problem there. With the kick. Cool, with the snare. Hyatt. Whoa, we have to listen to the Hyatt by itself. Let's high pass it. Good, and there's an annoying upper mid frequency that I will search for. Maybe we can lift the top a little bit. Let's listen to that in context. That's okay for now. The room mics. Mm. Let's listen to the room mics by themselves. There's a lot of bottom end in the room mics. I have to adjust that later, I think. Listen one more time. I think I have to flip the left and right also. That's better. And with the rest of the drums. Good enough as a start. I do this rather fast because I want to fill in all the instruments in the song so I can mix in context because it doesn't matter how a sound sounds by itself. So let's listen to some bass with the drums. typical DI bass, but I don't want a DI bass, I want a bass amp, so I will find the Logic Bass Amp Designer, because bass amps are made for basses. That's the most ugly bass amp, but it sounds the best for this, I think.
good enough for now. The lead vocals. Well, I it feels like I have a cold, so let's find the frequency where I have a cold, because cold is a frequency. Normally, it is around five to eight hundred hertz. Uh, I know from experience, so let's find it. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. Like that. You can try to find the frequency by raising it, but don't raise it too much, because if you raise it too much, all the frequencies will sound ugly. Um, 4 dB-ish is good. I think I raised it too much at this time, but the only thing I know I will take that out a little bit. The only thing I know now the vocal sounds more open. I will also raise the high pass filter until I can hear it, and then I will back it a little bit. There I start to hear it, so I will back it. I will turn it like that. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. Everywhere I go. I will start to run before I crawl. I scream all Yeah, and when the chorus kicks in, I hear two things. First of all, I need to control the dynamics a little bit. So I will open up the compressors on my lead bus. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all everywhere I go I will start to run before That's okay. Two, three dBs of compression on on each compressor. It's enough. Uh, but I also hear that it's some kind of nose when I'm singing louder. So I will search for that in the multi-band compressor. So I will solo up one band. That frequency and I will try to compress just that frequency a little bit. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all everywhere I go. I will start to run before I crawl. I dream of learning. Much better. And I listen to this in context. I tried to do that as much as possible. Now let's listen to the two bus, the master sub. If you don't know what I mean with master sub and buses and subs and all that, check out my template video. I don't think we have to EQ anything at this point, but I will listen for the compressor. Why do I do this now? I have the instruments that have most energy in the mix, the drums, bass and lead vocals. They are the most powerful elements of the mix. The rest is noisy wallpaper. So now I can adjust the compressor and then mix into that compressor. So I can hear it throughout when I'm mixing. Maybe I go back and adjust it later, but I can set it up as a start. I will exaggerate so I can adjust the attack and release. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all everywhere I go. Something like that. The only thing I know.
When it comes to compression on a master, I try to do as little as I can get away with. All compressors make the stereo image less wide. They do. Even though I have this set up as a dual mono compressor, I couple it so everything I do affects both left and right. But it's like two mono compressors. Because if I have a big floor tom hit on one side, I don't want the other side to be compressed, which it would be if I would have used a stereo compressor. Now let's fill in all the other instruments. I will start with the percussion. That's fine for now, the keyboards. I'm setting up a loop for only the chorus so we can listen to the strings and the harmony vocals. So let's listen to the strings. Cool. The harmony vocals. And the vocal harmony, uh, I know that it was me that sang it. I did it in the same microphone as the lead vocal, so why not copy the plugins from the lead vocal that we just did? So the channel EQ, the compressor, I'm copying by pressing Alt on the Mac and then just click and drag. No there, and the multi-presser thing. Cool, now we can listen to the whole song again and start thinking about what we want to do with the drums. What do you want to do? So what do you want to do? No, tell me, what do you want to do? What I want to do is I want to hear them more clearly. I want them a little bit more shiny. And they are very, very dry. So let's fix that. Let's listen to just the drums. I want to start with the snare. Snare drum sounds like this by itself. Mm. Let's listen to just the top snare mic. I don't mind that there's a tone in it, but it's like this low mid ugly thing. So
Let's try that and with the bottom snare. Maybe you've noticed that I often leave a spot, the top spot in my channel strips. And that's because Logic's way of sort the plugins is from the top to the bottom. So if I want to insert a plugin before something, I have to have a spot available, which I have when I use the second spot all the time. So that's why. Let's see if we can open up the top of the snare a little bit. And also some bottom end. That's pretty cool. Let's try that. All drums. Let's take away the room mics. Let's listen to the kick by itself. Like. I will try some overdrive on the kick. Just a tiny little bit of overdrive. It's more like a tape saturator thing when I use it this subtle. I think it's pretty cool. I think there's a bit of low mid issues in the bass drum and also I want to tighten up the sub bass on it. So let's find this. Let's find this low mid thing. Uh, that one. And I will set this high pass filter to 24 and look, see if I can tighten up the low end a little bit. If you remember on my last video, when we checked the face on the drums, I wasn't certain if I liked the face flipped or not on the kick out mic, so let's try both. It's cooler when the face is not flipped, so get rid of that. Let's see if we can enhance the bass drum even more. Normally, I use two equalizers, one before and one after other processing. So the one before, it's a correction EQ, where I sort of correct sounds that I think needs correction. And the last EQ in the chain is more like an enhance EQ, where I enhance things I want to enhance. All the drums together again sounds like this. I think it sounds pretty cool. Let's listen to it with the room mics.
There's a lot of bottom end in the room, Mike. I think I have to tighten that up a little bit. So listen only to the room. Sounds like this. That, I think, will be better. All the drums again. I have to do an experiment. I have to see if I need now to flip the phase on the room mics. Yes, because, because I have a high pass filter on the room mics, the high pass filter, the equalizer makes some kind of phase weird issues. I need to flip the phase on the room mics to blend the room mics in with the kick drum to make it punchy. So I had to do that. What I haven't told you in any video is this fake room track. Normally I use the Ocean Way plugin from Universal Audio, which is sort of a sample of the Ocean Way Studios, fantastic room with great microphones. I can't do that if I only use the Logic plugins, so I try to mimic it a little bit with the Space Designer verb, recording room. Sounds like this by itself. And we have to take some of the higher bass, low, mid up. Before the reverb. And let's listen to that within the drums, see if we need it. It sounds more like the drums sound natural within a room, I think. Uh, let's see if we need this snare reverb also. So let's go to that. It's too long. This is not the best sounding reverb in the world, but I think it does the job, hopefully. Just a tiny little bit so we get some air around the drum. I will try the same on the kick drum. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. And the snare once again. All the drums. Let's listen to all the drums without the kick and snare verb. And with the kick and snare verb. without the fake room. Yeah, 
Should you have reverb on a kick drum? Well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's up to you. For real, it's up to you. There's no rules. There's never any rules. N never. Totally never. Now when we have adjusted the drums a little bit, let's listen to it in context with all the instruments. The only thing I know Is that I don't know enough at all Everywhere I go I will start to run before I crawl I dream of learning Dream of knowing Yeah. They are clearer, they are a little shinier. I feel that I need to have some more impact when the chorus hits. I feel that the verse should be thinner and airier. Airier? Airier? airier. And that the chorus should be wider and fatter. Let's listen to the drum ribbon by itself. That is cool, and I want to destroy it. For real, I want to destroy it. I want to compress everything out of this. I want to make it hard. When I think about hard-sounding things, oh, someone's going to hate me for this. I think SSL. The compressor reacts so much to the kick that I have to put an equalizer before the compressor and take the low end down. So that the compressor reacts to all the drums equally, or more or less equally. That's not a sound you want to hear by itself, but blended in with the rest of the drums. Let's see how it sounds. It fills up the gap between the hits, sort of. Probably I will automate this so you can only hear it in the chorus. Let's listen to the drum trash. I know you're not supposed to do this, but I want to throw this inside of a guitar amplifier. And not this one. Small tweed combo, maybe. That's cool. Let's set the controls a little bit more human. That's pretty cool. And play with the position of the microphone. Let's try that. And with the rest of the drums, I fade it in. I think it could be even a little bit dirtier, and I need to take some low mid out of it afterwards.
Obviously, it's too loud, but I think it will do its job. Make the drums fatter in the chorus. I will check the kick and snare parallel. And that is a parallel compressor set up from the kick and the snare. So let's listen to that. We don't need it now, but if I feel I need more attack of the kick and snare, I can just raise the volume on this and I will have it. The drums parallel, that's a parallel compressor for all the drums. Who doesn't like that? Together with the rest of the drum kit, how does it sound when I blend it in? Cool. The drum distortion. That is distorted. I will... How does that sound with the normal drums? Maybe. I don't know. I have it. Let's see if I need it. I don't know. So let's see if we should have some more reverbs on the snare drum. We have this snare verb, but that's more like air around the drum. Now I will see if I need some more obvious reverbs. So let's solo up the snare drum and the room verb. Yeah, I like the verb. I like the reverb, but it's too much, obviously. Let's listen to the plate simulation. Mm, it's a little tiny bit too long. And also a little bit too fat. You hear that the tail of the reverb ends before the next snare hit and that was what I was after. Something like that maybe, all the drums together. Okay, I will make a mental note that I want the room reverb on the verse and the plate reverb on the chorus. We will do that when we're automating. So, I turn them off for now. Let's listen to the drums with all the instruments again and see what more we should change. The only thing I know I think this sound pretty good. Shall we check the toms? Just the toms. And the tom one sound like this. Pretty midi. 
not midi, uh, midi, like mid range. So let's find that frequency. Somewhere around there. I could have tuned the toms better. Something like that, and let's see if we could open the toms up a little bit. And pan them where I think they are in the drum set. We can listen to them to we can listen to the toms with the overhead so we can pan them according to the overhead. That's okay. Let's listen to only the drums, but with the toms engaged also. A little bit too loud for my taste. Not bad. That could work. Let's listen to the Tom's verb. This fellow. Something like that, maybe. Before we do anything more, I want to check my master bus compressor again. See if I... so I don't compress too hard at the master bus. The only thing I know is that I don't know. Looks good. Sounds good. Nice and gentle. So now we have mixed some drums. I'm not finished with the drums. I'm gonna go back and tweak them. But now it's time to fill in with all the other instruments and effects and things. That is what we're gonna do next time I see you. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And the Swedish word of today, because we have so much snow in Sweden, at least where I live at the moment, snow in Swedish is snö. Snö. And Roger that. <laughs>